and welcome. Mr. A debuted in 1967 within the pages of Wally Wood's anthology comic, Wit's End. Mr. A would then appear in a variety of fanzines and underground comics throughout the late 60s and early 70s. Some of those obscure appearances were eventually compiled into Mr. A No. 1, published in 1973. The creator, Steve Ditko, would continue to write, draw, and self-publish Mr. A stories throughout the rest of his career. Even with a casual glance, one can easily determine that Mr. A is not a traditional comic book hero. He neither has superpowers nor an origin story. One day the intrepid, morally rigorous reporter, Rex Grain, decided to put on a white mask and an all-white suit. Then he began to dole out justice with his fists and a gun. There's no inciting incident. There's no call to action. There's no training montage with the New Wave soundtrack. There's just some guy with too much free time who is driven by the need to force others to conform to his beliefs concerning proper moral behavior. Or suffer the consequences. Mr. A's civilian identity is basically indistinguishable from his hero identity. The white mask he wears to disguise himself is literally his own face, displaying a disdainful, condescending expression. If you think about it, it's not really a mask. It's a frozen declaration of what Mr. A feels towards those he deems criminals. It's probably more accurate to call Mr. A a comic book protagonist, not a hero. And Mr. A's primary antagonist is, roughly, everyone who isn't Mr. A. Steve Ditko created the character shortly after he quit working on the extremely popular comic book he co-created and co-wrote, Spider-Man. While Ditko worked on Spider-Man, he discovered and was subsequently influenced by objectivism, the mode of philosophy founded by Ayn Rand. This influence and Ditko's understanding of objectivism became the foundation of this character. To truly understand Mr. A's motivations and reasoning, you need a very basic, Wikipedia level of understanding about objectivism. Luckily, the founder of Objectivism, Ayn Rand, summarized the philosophy herself in the afterword to Atlas Shrugged, so I can just directly quote her. My philosophy, in essence, is the concept of man as a heroic being, with his own happiness as the moral pursuit of his life, with productive achievement as his noblest activity, and reason as his only absolute. Ditko's interest in upholding the objectivist principles inspired him to create a hero that exemplified the rules he believed to be important. Namely, there is good and there is evil, and there is nothing in between. It's also hard not to notice the similarities between Mr. A and another Ditko creation. The question. Both were created at roughly the same time in 1967 and somewhat embody the same view of the world. However, the question is an intentionally compromised, comics code-friendly version of Mr. A. The main difference between the two being, the question upheld traditional hero values while Mr. A was guided by a new, very strict philosophy. Mr. A is the personification of one of the most well-known objectivist principles, A is A, which is, by the way, totally taken from Aristotle's law of identity. Basically, this means that reality is self-evident. It exists, and its existence isn't open to interpretation. Following that logic, good and evil also exist, and the difference between the two are self-evident and not open to interpretation. Admittedly, that's a very rudimentary examination of objectivism, but these are the highlights you need to know to understand the character of Mr. A. Mr. A is a man that holds the overly simplistic worldview that the path of a righteous, purposeful life is obvious, and we should all strive for that level of perfection, regardless of the self-sacrifice it may require. Those that refuse to accept this basic perspective and act accordingly are left to meet their fate, which is usually both tragic and fatal. Mr. A only sees issues in black and white, good and evil, right and wrong. Within that point of view is the arrogant confidence that his moral position is the only correct position. This is his reality, and it is inflexible. In order for this character to work as intended, Mr. A can never waver. He can never have a moment of self-doubt. He can never challenge his own perceptions and conclusions. He can only dismiss contradictions and justifications. And where applicable, Mr. A will literally beat his convictions into another person. From Mr. A's perspective, violence is not an unreasonable reaction to a situation. It is the logical application of the code of conduct established by his opponent. When challenged with violence, he returns the challenge in a disproportionate manner. Of course, being a righteous individual, Mr. A always triumphs. This reinforces his moral superiority. Overall, Mr. A is quite literally a one-note character. That note being, I am right, 
You are wrong. End of discussion. The stories involving Mr. A are, well, there's no polite way to say this. They're terrible. They aren't actual stories, to be honest. They're like morality plays with a transparently thin premise that allows Mr. A to defeat a wrongdoer while speechifying about right and wrong and the moral duty of the individual. Eventually, Ditko drops the pretense of there being even the slightest hint of a story and just has Mr. A lecture the reader directly. This approach to storytelling hits a new level of absurdity when all character dialogue becomes unrealistic monologues. Seriously, who talks like this? No one. No one talks like this, ever. In all fairness, Ditko isn't writing characters. He's writing personifications of bad human behavior. The people in these stories, so to speak, are simply there to argue with Mr. A. Their actions and reactions are overly simplified and easily invalidated by Mr. A's superior moral position. They are straw men, but Ditko doesn't pretend they are otherwise. Regardless, when one needs to resort to that level of manipulation, they've completely invalidated the argument they're trying to make. Despite these criticisms, one can't help feeling a sense of fascination about Ditko's work on Mr. A. This is a creator passionate about the work and the message he's trying to get across. It's teeming with frustration about a world that not only tolerates the worst we're capable of being, but then provides excuses for that terrible behavior. Steve Ditko, much like his character, Mr. A, lived his life upholding the principles of objectivism. Due to his dedication to this philosophy, Ditko did not give any interviews. Ditko simply did the work and, as he stated many times to those who attempted to interview him, he let that work speak for itself. That was all he was willing to say about his creative output. There are two notable exceptions to this. In 1989, Ditko recorded a five and a half minute spoken word piece for the documentary Masters of Comic Book Art. In that piece, he read a prepared statement that outlined his approach to what defines a hero. It slightly comes off as a rambling commercial for objectivism. The second instance was in 1999, when he produced a four-page comic book essay that very obliquely addressed the creation of Spider-Man. This was in response to Stanley's public written statement that he considered Ditko to be the co-creator of Spider-Man. While somewhat unclear in the essay, one can infer that Ditko objected to the co-creator status, because Lee merely had the idea and it was Ditko that brought the character to life. One can further infer that Ditko believed he deserved the sole credit. Lee facilitated the process, but it was Ditko who realized it in its present form. These two examples are notable because they indirectly pertain to the work Ditko produced. However, it should also be noted that Ditko wrote many essays on a variety of topics he thought important. Most were illustrated, but some were straight text pieces. In most of Ditko's essays, he asks a question, provides a range of arguments, but he seems to avoid directly answering the question he originally asked. Or, more accurately, his actual response is lost in all the noise he creates trying to refute possible contradictory positions. He is thorough, but not succinct. That being said, there is a quiet nobility in living by your principles, despite immense pressure to do otherwise. And that's something you can't dismiss. This is why it's difficult to be too critical about Steve Ditko's work or life following his adoption of objectivism. For better or for worse, he lived by the rules he had adopted. Ditko went his own way, and he maintained this direction with silence and dignity. And that's something not a lot of us can claim with any authority. That's it for today. Like, share, subscribe, and comment, and I will talk at you later. Until next time.